Y'all, good morning, everyone. Look at that sunrise here in Mobile Bay, Alabama. How pretty is this? Y'all, we got a long run today. I'm with Malik, and then this is myself, Steve on Bama Saltwater Fishing. Happy for y'all to join me. We got about 46 miles to go out from the bay into the Gulf, but right now we have a lot of bait that we need to cast net so we can fill up our live well. So y'all, we're gonna get to cast netting. Happy you can join me. Let's get out there and get us some bait. Y'all, we're gonna cast net us some live bait real quick. See, that's better. <laughs> that's what it's supposed oh, to be. Yeah, they're a bunch. That's what that cast was supposed to be. Fill in bait. Oh yeah, we got bait. Oh, yeah. Y'all, so we got a little bit of bait. We have some live pogies right here, some live LYs in the live well. Let me put this joker back and we'll head out and maybe pick up some more on our way out. So see you out on the Gulf of Mexico. We just came out, we're about 55 miles offshore. One of the big old platforms, old rigs. We had sabikied up some live bait, cast netted some live bait. We're gonna circle around and see what we can find. We're in this cobalt blue water. It is absolutely gorgeous. Y'all, let's not wait any further. Let's get a bait out. Y'all, I just put on a live cigar minnow. I'm gonna go ahead and drop it down while it's still live, and then I'll show you exactly how I have it rigged up if we get a fish. But I wanna get it through the head. Don't pierce the brains, because otherwise you're just gonna defeat the purpose of using live bait. But here we go, on the Carolina rig. Oh, I got something. Yeah. yeah. There it is. I don't think it's a brood of an AJ, something <laughs> on the live cigar minnow. Oh, I said that. <laughs> it just took some drag. Ah, here he is. I don't know what that is. Pretty fish. Barracuda. And there's a Kobe below him. You see that? Yeah. Well, we got a Barracuda. Use him as chunk bait. That's what took off so long. There we go. We have some chunk bait now, dude. <laughs> cool, first fish of the day. Just landed this little barracuda right here. Thankfully, my circle hook was in the corner of his mouth so those big old teeth didn't get me. We're gonna use him as chunk bait. And then I need to retie my leader because he did shape it up some, so. That was a waste of a cigar minnow, but oh. pretty cool fish. Told you that I'd show you what I'm using once I caught a fish and I caught that barracuda. This is a Pen Fathom 2 30 size reel conventional with 50 pound braid. And then a dark matter conventional rod. This is a psychedelic seven foot heavy power rod. These are linked down below. Pretty sweet, a lot of different colors. They do sponsor the channel as well. Coming down, I have a top shot, a 50 pound fluorocarbon leader. It's about six feet of it from my braid to that top shot, eight ounce egg sinker, black barrel swivel, three more feet of 130 pound fluorocarbon leader to a circle hook. I usually snail my circle hooks, but the Barracuda shaped it up, so I just tied a uni knot. I'm gonna drop down another live bait and see what else we get. All right, let's take another live bait. This time it's a thread fin herring. So now I have this live bait on the Carolina rig. I'm gonna drop it back down, see what we catch. We're sitting in 270 feet of water right here. I'm getting a bite. I think I have a fish on. Fish on mount. <laughs> Big fish. Mm, I'm gonna try to pull it out. I'm getting some leeway on it. Mm. <sighs> Come on. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Whatever it is. Uh, I just got that drag pretty dang tight. Heavy leader. What was that sound? <laughs> Hope not. Oh, I haven't seen color yet. It's another barracuda. Yeah, look at this sucker. <laughs> Can't stay away from them things, man. That's a big old barracuda. Dang, man. Whoa, there's another big one below him. Look at it. Heck yeah. Look at the one behind him. It's worth looking at. Oh my G. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> it's definitely. <laughs> oh, there's a mahi. See him? Yep. Oil rig transport. There you go. Get him, get him, get him, get him. 
Get him! Get him! I'm gonna help you. Get him up, get him up. I don't see color yet. There he is. Uh, I'll measure him first. You want me to bring him in? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Ah, almost. Measure him, see if he keep. Oh, I got a big one. Good job, Aunt Mallet. Got the first AJ on. And I just hooked up too. Mm. Good job, man. <laughs> see if he's third. What is it? 34 to the four. Bring him away from the structure, at least. Yeah, that's a nice one. See him? Is that a barracuda? A shark? A shark? Stupid yeah. shark. <laughs> that's why he fought hard. Well, <laughs> the jig's getting the target species at least. Y'all, I got a shark here. Malik landed the target species. I'm just getting junk. Thank you, sir. I almost don't want to do this. <clears throat> there we go. We're moving around platforms. See how big these things are? But I'm just chumming with some of this barracuda and I see some little mahi-mahi behind the boat. So I got some 30 pound fluorocarbon and a four alt circle hook. I'm gonna put a chunk of this meat on there and then throw a chunk out. And see if we can get, oh yeah, there's a couple mahi. See if they'll come up and eat this barracuda chunk. I have a shark here on my circle hook and look at the dolphin chasing the shark. That's weird. Oh, he's coming that way. That's not what I wanted to be honest, but maybe a big mahi will come up behind of them. Mm. Yo, these things are powerful. There, oh, he's already got a hook in him. You see that? You would think you would have learned by then. Try this again. Yeah, I have one. A big old hardtail. I was hoping that was a mahi mahi. Dumb hardtail came up and got it. At least we have some more bait. <laughs> it's a stud hardtail. Yo, look at the flame on that sucker coming out. Wow. They don't even look real on camera. That's crazy. <laughs> we have free jumping tuna everywhere right now. I mean, all around us. Check this out. About 20 all the way up to 60 pound tuna just jumping like crazy. We're gonna try to get one on a popper, try to get one on some live bait, see if we can get them to buy it. They've been tough. I think it's all a matter of time because they kept popping up behind me. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> it's because I put the camera on you. Yeah. Oh, oh, hey. Got one. I might have to double up with you. Get yeah, back again. again. I gotta get a double up with you. Malik hooked up with the tuna. Where's he at? See if we can double up on, on tuna. Yeah, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Yeah, buddy! Man. Y'all, we just got a tuna on deck. Heck yeah, dude. I'm going to get one on the popper as well. Have a live bait sitting out. That is so cool. We'll take it. Heck Good yeah. job. Y'all check it out. Big old rig. Big flame. Tuna sky. We're going to see if we can get another one. Pretty cool. Oh, I just marked to the mouth of Fort Morgan and Mobile Bay where we launched. We launched right here. And we have 70.3 miles. That's how far out we are. How crazy is that? Something I don't suggest to everybody to do, even us. But uh, somehow we ended up out here. We didn't catch anything else yet. So we're just got a couple trolling rods and we have 70.2 miles left. We're sitting in 1700 feet of water at this true oil rig, really neat. So we did plan on coming all the way out here, but we did something I don't suggest to just everybody, you know, especially in a bay boat. But it kind of paid off, so we're gonna troll back. Y'all also go check out this new Mossy Oak gear. They've actually partnered with the channel, so I'm wearing the Mossy Oak fishing apparel, the long sleeve shirt. It's been keeping me nice and cool and not sunburned on my arms and back since all day long. They have the shorts, compression shorts, hats, 
Today I'm wearing my Bama saltwater hat though, which shows her on the website. But Mossy Oak will be linked down below. Y'all, we just left Patronus and we're gonna drop down some jet. What is a trolling motor doing? <laughs> we're gonna drop down some jigs, about 200 feet of water, 250, try to find some AJs. Whew, got one. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Be a keeper. <laughs> Be a keeper. Malik's doing good today. I'm gonna help you here. Doing really good today. You got him. Take your time. That's a stout rod. How long is your leader? Oh, there he is. I see him. That's a nice one. He might keep. Oh, there's another one behind him. Oh, he's gonna keep. Yeah. There you go. That's a keeper. Well, really nice legal AJ. They only have to be 34 inches from the tip of their mouth. It's still feisty to the fork in their tail. That's a nice, about an average size on there. <laughs> they yeah. fight so hard. I don't care who you are. Those things are hard fighters. So great job, man. You're only like one a person. So I'm gonna drop a jig down, try to get mine, and uh doing pretty good today, man. Heck yeah, let's get one. It's crazy like what a brick wall when you start to pull back on them. Oh my god. Yeah. Just Good one. Like <laughs> yep. Yeah, just like that. I just want to keep his head turned. I hope he's a keeper. Yeah. I hope so. Still pretty. Oh yeah. That's going to be a good one. I'm going to come on your side. You can get the gaff whenever you're ready. Mm. I'm freaking weak. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Come on. I, I'm wearing myself out. <laughs> Yo, I don't care how I'm fighting this fish. I just want to get it up. <sighs> I'm wore out, bro. <sighs> Those things suck. Yeah, they do. Make you feel like you're about to throw up. <sighs> Hope it's a keeper. I don't say cover. <laughs> no. <laughs> Give it to you back. <sighs> there we go. That's comfortable. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have thrown it on one of my lightest setups. <laughs> See color yet? We still got a little bit. <laughs> you know, I'll admit I'm a weakling when it comes to this. <sighs> oh, I see color right here. Is it keeper? Here we go. Oh yeah, that's a keeper. Malik's at the gap. Slow and steady. Oh, he's on the boat. Oh yeah, that's a keeper. Slow and steady. Ready? Oh, oh, get under the head. There you go. Bring him. <laughs> Sweet. Yo, that was a wimpy fight, but we got him. We've been out here, what? Oh, eight wow. hours oh wow man thank you bro yeah <laughs> y'all we just got our limit of aj's one a person 34 inches minimum length on the dark matter setup heck yeah it's time for us to go in that is awesome let's go y'all <laughs> we'll see you in a bit oh it's so flat out here 
Got about 55 more miles to go and we got a cooler full of fish. How awesome is that? I think we're both so worn out, man. We're, yeah. we're exhausted, we're done. So we're headed back. Hey everyone, we just made it back to the boat dock. That was a 70.2 mile run. We stopped in between. I wanna make sure I don't hit this boat dock. So I'm kind of looking away, but Malik is uh, getting my truck. We're gonna load up. We are exhausted. Got an awesome cooler full of fish and uh, probably end up giving one of those jacks away. Then we're gonna cook one, cook some of that tuna or not cook the tuna, if you know, you know. And uh, so we'll probably see you back at my house because we're hot, need some Gatorades, need some more ice. And uh, what a really exciting trip. Couldn't believe that we went out 70 miles in the bay boat. Luckily I had my buddy with me. So if something happened, at least one of us could uh, help each other. But that was an awesome trip, how cool. And I'm glad that y'all were able to share that with me. So we'll see you back at the house. Y'all, so Malik and I got home. He cleaned his amberjack. I'll clean mine tomorrow for y'all to be just a second. But we do have Malik's yellowfin tuna. They only have to be 27 inches curved fork length, which means curved fork length is from the tip of the nose straight through the middle because they're very round to the fork and the tail. They only have to be 27 inches. This one made it over. Very delectable fish right there. So now I got lucky with that popper. Y'all, you know, we're gonna clean this up. I'm gonna clean it up for him because I'm gonna take a steak off that as well. <laughs> but here we go. Got up towards the head. We got some crazy skin. Got towards the head. Go around. That meat's beautiful, man. Pretty head meat. And I like to go down the middle. See there, there's a bloodline in there going along their lateral line. And you can cut on one side of that bloodline, kind of open this fish up, all the way down to the tail, and just kind of fillet it right off. Open it up from the center. I'm not perfect at filleting these. I know some of y'all fillet them every single day. See, I'm kind of just opening it up not perfect which we can scrape a lot of that meat off and that'll turn into like spicy tuna so here we go nice little tuna filet you want to cut out a lot of that dark red meat right there that's the stuff that you don't really want to be eating it's gonna make it taste pretty fishy so you get most of that dark red Real dark red meat. I mean, tuna is a red meat, a pink meat. But you'll see it in person, and hopefully you can see it with the light. Now that's real dark. That's a bloodline. We bled this fish out. You notice it's not bleeding all over the table, but still want to get that stuff out. So now that I got all the red meat off, we have a nice piece of dressed yellowfin tuna. Look at that. Really pretty fish. I'll take a paper towel, pat this dry. Like I said, you don't want to wash it off with water. You wash a lot of the natural oils off. If this is like an amberjack like tomorrow or a red snapper, I'll probably take my water hose spray it down. But this tuna, we're gonna make some sushi with it, sashimi, and also steak it out. Really pretty loin. That's the top loin. And then I just do the same thing with the rest of the fish. Now we have our four loins of yellowfin tuna. Check them all out. Really pretty pieces of meat. I mean, they're gorgeous. Need to trim some more of this red meat out and then we'll start skinning it and cutting it into some steaks. I pulled some extra meat off the carcass. This will be used for some spicy tuna dip with some homemade original sauce. So there's that, so it's not wasted. So now I'm gonna start skinning this fish. Left a little bit of that tail meat, just so something to hold on to. Once you get an initial grip, there we go. And keep your knife flat to the skin. Check, make sure you're not cutting through the skin. Just like that. Look at that beautiful piece of yellowfin tuna and nothing left on that skin. I'm gonna do that for all four fillets. We'll cut them into steaks and I'll see you inside. Y'all welcome back to the kitchen. So it is blistering hot outside. I'm happy to be inside, but I'm gonna be cooking two separate dishes. I got some of that tuna. I've already eaten some raw, already made some spicy tuna, but we're gonna be making some seared tuna sandwiches with Asian ginger coleslaw. That's gonna be really good, made from scratch. And then I'm also gonna cook that amberjack and that's gonna be a separate dish as well that y'all get to watch and enjoy the whole thing. First things first, I do wanna marinate my tuna for at least 10 minutes and I've cut them into more manageable pieces. See that fresh tuna? So I'm gonna marinate the pieces that we're gonna be cooking 
in some soy sauce. You don't really need anything else because soy sauce is pretty salty. So I have four pieces here that I'll be searing. Put that in a bag. 10 minutes is good. You can do overnight. It's up to you. Less is more when it comes to this type of dish. So just enough. It'll absorb some of that salt where you don't have to cook it too much. And that's not low sodium soy sauce. That's regular soy sauce. Mm, smells good. Seal that up. Make sure it's covered. And that's going to go in the fridge for about 10 minutes while we're prepping the rest of our meal. Doesn't have to be long. Now let's go ahead and make our dressing, but first things first, I do want to slice up some of this tuna, have some fresh sashimi. This may not be your style as an acquired taste, but I love tuna. And as always, we're gonna lay it out on a plate. So I've sliced some up in a plate, have soy sauce, little squeeze of some potent wasabi, We'll mix that together. There we go. And then I have one more thing that I'm gonna make with the raw tuna. It's gonna be spicy tuna, just to show you. So all these little scraps, I didn't cut out to those size pieces. No sense to throw them away. You can either just dip them yourself in the soy sauce and eat them, or do like I do. We're gonna finally mince these up with the knife. This is gonna be for our spicy tuna. And everyone I've let try this, they say it is delicious. So now that that's finely minced, let's put it in our bowl. You can chop it up as much as you want or as little as you want. If you like chunkier pieces, you can leave it chunky. If not, you can do like I do. Just take the knife, do fine slices. Now let's grab our secret ingredient for that spicy tuna. So now we have some homemade original sauce from my buddy Bun Keeve. If you're watching this, I appreciate you. He owns Poke Bowls and Gulf Shores. They don't pay me or anything. They're just really nice people. And uh, he gave me some of their sauce. It's very good. It's a homemade original. It's kind of like garlicky, spicy, little chia seeds in there. Probably a little oil. Mm, smells good. Take a tiny spoonful because you still want to be able to taste the tuna. I would call that maybe a, a half a tablespoon. Okay, and this is all I do. Let's mix that up. Get it coated. And if you make this at home, you can do the same thing with a little bit of sriracha and oil. But this is especially good. Maybe one day we'll get some available on the channel. But once you have that mixed up, I like to scoop it up kind of into a little round shape. And then in the middle of our sashimi. Check that out. Beautiful plate of food. Let's give that a bite before we get into our cooked portion. Like I said, if you don't like raw fish, you don't have to do it this way. But if you do, I know there's a lot of people that love fresh raw tuna. It is amazing. But we're going to be cooking it as well, so don't worry. I do just want to try a piece by itself. See how fresh. melts in your mouth it's a very fresh flavor it doesn't taste fishy like it doesn't really have a taste other than just you know it's tuna if you know you know it's kind of hard to explain you just have to try it it's really good if you dip it in some soy and wasabi like i've had mixed together you can also do some pickled ginger but just dip it in that wasabi and the soy sauce mix mm. That's magic right there. <laughs> that is magic. Now here's my favorite. Take some of this spicy tuna mix that I've made. Now, if you can have some rice, some edamame, some cilantro, chives, and make you a little poke bowl, but I like eating it just like this. That's my favorite part. That homemade original spice, it's got a nice kick to it. Really great flavor. Mixed together with some fresh tuna. Fresh yellow thin caught in the bay boat. You really can't beat that. Mm. Y'all, so my hands are clean. And let's go ahead and make the dressing for our coleslaw. I have all the ingredients laid out. I'll go by it one by one. This is quarter cup of vegetable oil in a bowl. 
quarter cup of rice vinegar. This is just sushi rice vinegar. Very strong smell, but it does help in contrast of all the other flavors. Now I just have a quarter cup of regular honey. Get this in there. Pretty thick stuff, I love honey. Now we have a tablespoon of sesame seed oil into the bowl. Gonna do a couple pinches of salt. There we go. It's kind of like a teaspoon of salt if you had to measure it. This is a tablespoon of soy sauce. Regular soy sauce. You can use low sodium as well, but the regular, that salt kind of helps bring out some of the flavor. This is gonna be sound kind of weird, but this is a tablespoon of peanut butter. We have a tablespoon of sriracha, regular sriracha. And last but not least, I have a ginger and garlic paste that I mushed up in the mortar pestle. This is a tablespoon of minced ginger and then one clove of garlic. And it's going to go in there. It's going to give it really nice flavor. Then in our other bowl, I have some shredded fresh carrots and then some fresh cabbage shredded. But let's take a fork and mix up these ingredients. Peanut butter and the honey is the hardest thing to get mixed together. So once you can break up the peanut butter, and this is not crunchy peanut butter, it's smooth. There's enough crunch in the cabbage and carrots. But uh, you can also add peanuts to it as well, like half peanuts roasted, but we're just doing this. Once you break up the peanut butter with the fork, you can take a whisk, whisk it up, make it a even, thoroughly mixed, homogeneous mixture here. It means all the same. I wanna try that before I pour it all over there just to make sure that mix is good. And that's our dressing. Take a small spoon. Don't be afraid to try stuff. So here we go. Ooh, that is good. Oh man. I'm so happy about that. All right, here we go. Let's pour it over our cabbage and carrot mix. You don't wanna to be too saturated and my hands are clean, so we're gonna mix that together. But like I said, you don't want it to be too saturated. So see this mix, that's perfect. Cover that up, put the rest in the fridge, save it for later. Now that's what I wanna do with this as well. I'm gonna cover that up, put it in the fridge. We'll get our tuna out, get ready to season it and cook it. It's going to be really easy. We have a cast iron pan. I'm melting a tablespoon of butter on some medium heat. Taking my tuna out. It's marinated for 10 minutes, like I said. So I do have some butter in this pan getting warm up so we can toast our ciabatta bread. Make sure all that soy sauce drains off of it. And that's what you want right there. You want it to start searing. It's a fast cook. It's like six minutes to cook it at the most. Oh, well that one fell in pretty easy, but <laughs> no worries. Got another piece. They get slippery when they have soy sauce on them. So get some of that butter spread out and lay these down. It's gonna be about three minutes on each side. Put a little bit of pepper on there, just on one side. You can already see some of them starting to turn white on the bottom. So we're gonna take our ciabatta buns, got a little bit of melted butter on there, rub it in. Just kind of let them brown and warm up. You don't have to toast them if you want to, you can, but I'm just letting them get warm. So you can see the white starting to turn on one side. We just want them seared. I'm gonna drop a half a tablespoon of butter in the middle, let that continue to melt, and flip it. Oh man, look at that tuna. It's just like cooking steak. See that, how it started to sear? Oh yeah. Perfect piece. That's going to be another three minutes. And I'm not a chef. I just like to eat. <laughs> Especially fresh food. Hold that one side down. It's a thicker side. Get a nice sear and some of that black pepper on there. See y'all? Got my slaw out of the fridge has a slight chill, it's not super cold. We're gonna take our slaw as our base. This is that ginger sesame oil Asian slaw. Lay that down on the base. You can be as generous or as little as you wanna put on there. Everybody's different. I'm gonna take this piece, put it in the middle of that sandwich. 
Take another piece, same thing here. We can probably double this one up if we want. Check that out. And then put the topping on. And see all those juices from that tuna cooking? This is fresh yellowfin from the Gulf of Mexico. Absolutely amazing. Can't wait to try it. There we go. Y'all, let's go ahead and go outside. As always, it's beautiful in my backyard. The view's amazing. It's awesome to be able to share this food with y'all. And let's go give this a try. We got Ono and Bobo. You're always asking where they are. Or where's Bobo? Oh my gosh, Ono, really? <laughs> Bobo's a dummy too. Okay, but, oh no, hey, you want some? Bobo, you want some? Bobo, Bobo, you want this? I got you something, you wanna go? <laughs> Y'all, let's go take a bite of our fresh yellowfin tuna sandwich. Here we go, first impressions. I've already tried the tuna by itself. This is fresh yellowfin Gulf of Mexico from the boat to the cleaning table to our plate. Let's give it a try. Mmm. Let me chew that. That is so good. Mmm. Tuna. Perfect. The bread was a great choice. It's nice and light. Not too tough to eat. Then that ginger coleslaw is amazing. It's got a nice Asian flair to it. Absolutely love it. But I gotta take another bite just to just to try it again. That was so good. Being able to enjoy this fresh food. Mmm. Here you go. <laughs> you want some? Mm -mm. Sorry, I can't share. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If y'all are here, I'll share with each and every one of you. Mm -mm, mm -mm -mm. See y'all, I hate to let you go, but we'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. Don't forget to go check out all the sponsors down linked below. There's even promo codes for you to use uh, Bama Saltwater hats on BamaSaltwater.com as well. Everything's linked below, y'all. I appreciate you. If you haven't subscribed yet, smash that subscribe button. Channel's constantly growing. It's amazing to be able to share these experiences with each and every one of y'all. As always, I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. We'll see you later.